Well, Google's Pixel event has just finished and I've got loads of notes. Let's talk it through. Google has literally just finished presenting their new phones, smartwatch and kind of tablet thing. I'll come on to that. And I'm still taking it all in. So this is just a quick reaction video to, the, what, to what I think are the main points. I do have full reviews of the Pixel 7, the Pixel 7 Pro and the Pixel Watch coming next week. So if you haven't already, I don't know why you haven't, but if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. So what we got today was a brand new Pixel 7 phone, a Pixel 7 Pro phone, a Pixel Watch and the Pixel Tablet. And all of these devices, apart from the Pixel Watch, are based around the Tensor G2 chip. And as you'd expect, Google is very excited about how much better this chip is than the first version. So for example, it's 60% faster for machine learning. And machine learning was mentioned loads in this event because it's something they rely on a huge amount to do video processing, photo processing and all the very clever smarts built into the Google Assistant. It's got lower power consumption, which should mean better battery life, hopefully. It makes the phones smarter with magically helpful features. It makes these phones better for voice assistants, better for calling. We'll get onto that in a bit. And they talked a lot about privacy by design. They made a very big point about that to the point where the new phones actually come with a VPN as standard. They also had quite a funny jibe at Apple by saying that they introduced car crash detection three years ago. And they also confirmed that you're going to get five years of security updates with the new Pixels and Pixel feature drops, as they call them, every few months. So starting with the Pixel 7, it's basically what they call the ultimate refinement of the Pixel. It's got a 6.3 inch display, smaller bezels and 25% more peak brightness and all day battery life, which you can get up to 72 hours out of if you have the super extreme battery saving mode turned on. It's got two new dual cameras on the back. One of them is a 12 megapixel wide. The other one is a 50 megapixel main camera. 90 hertz refresh rate screen, not variable. It's got 8 gigabytes of RAM and 128 and 256 gigabyte storage options. And there's three typically pixel colors to choose from, snow, lemongrass and obsidian. They called the Pixel 7 Pro their most sophisticated phone yet. That's got a 6.7 inch screen, the same size as the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And that has a variable refresh rate from 10 to 120 hertz. And it's got a triple rear camera so it has the same 50 megapixel camera as the pixel 7 and the same 12 megapixel wide camera but also a 48 megapixel telephoto with 5x zoom it's got 12 gigabytes of ram and 128 256 and 512 gigabyte storage options the battery is slightly bigger in the pixel 7 pro as well it's a 5000 milliamp hour battery and it has a polished metal frame which does look very nice and the pro comes in hazel snow and obsidian colors both phones have that tensor G2 chip, which is great news. And that chip is enabling these two phones to do some very interesting things. So they talked about voice assistants, for instance, and saying that things like live translate, you know, navigation, assistant voice typing, all of those really cool features built into the pixels is better because of the G2. For instance, you can lean on that assistant voice typing to get the right emoji. So if you describe an emoji fairly vaguely, these phones know how to interpret that. And then they talked about phone calling quite a bit, actually, which sounds Sounds a bit dull, but it isn't because these are still telephones, let's not beat around the bush, and it's such a overlooked thing during smartphone launches. And some of these features have been around for a little while, but they've just been improved on the new Pixel 7s. So things like call screening, which is this thing where the phone actually accepts a unknown call for you without you having to do anything and deals with it. And the Pixel 7 can even direct you through phone trees. So when you get those horrible endless options to choose from when you call a certain company, it can display on the screen what those options are because it reads them and turns them into text and you can just basically navigate through them with your finger. Brilliant. And they're also using clear calling, again, powered by machine learning, which kind of silences or gets rid of a lot of the noise around you and enhances the caller's voice just to make for a better sounding call. Then we got to the camera. And if you know me, you'll know that I'm a massive fan of Pixel cameras. Google don't go to quite the length of Apple in terms of shouting about all the hardware because most of the stuff that's going on here is in software. And they've done loads of work improving skin tone recognition and reproduction in photos. So they've partnered with experts and done lots of kind of meetings and things with people who know about this stuff just to make sure that these phones are recognizing and taking the best possible 
representation of different skin tones. The other thing that was fantastic is this accessibility option for blind and partially sighted users. And it's being applied to the process of taking selfies. So basically, if you're visually impaired or blind, the phone will guide you to take the best shot. I love that stuff. It's so obvious. It's such an obvious feature, but obviously it does require lots of very clever software behind the scenes. They've even worked out a way to improve blurry photos, and they're doing this in two ways. The first one is on the cameras themselves. So the Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro use a combination of machine learning and also combining different shots from the two different cameras to make a blurred photo not blurry. But if you've got a bunch of photos taken from a completely different camera, years ago even, you can use the same technology in these phones to unblur the images. And as you'd guess, it uses the Tensor G2 chip to do that. And you can even use things like Magic Eraser, which is so clever. If you've, if you've got a Pixel 6, you may have used that yourself. You can basically draw a little circle around something that you don't want in the, in the photo and it completely gets rid of it. Well now, on the 7 and 7 Pro, you can do that with old photos that weren't even taken on that phone. And the examples they showed us looked great, which they're going to, obviously, but I can't wait to test that out. Moving on to video, they have introduced their own version of cinematic mode, which is what Apple calls it. They've called it cinematic blur, I think. Fair enough. The examples looked good, but I do need to test that. There's also 10-bit HDR for video, which gives you brighter colors, better contrast. Then they talked about the zoom technology, and it got very, very interesting. So on the Pixel 7 Pro, you now get pro-level zoom. And apparently that gives us the highest quality zoom on a Pixel ever. They even said it's like having a DSLR with all the lenses you ever need. And they're doing something very similar to Apple with this. So that main 50 megapixel sensor, they basically zoom into it, zoom into a 12 megapixel part of that sensor. This is a terrible explanation, but it's roughly what they're doing to give you a 2x that is very sharp rather than that horrible kind of digital loss that you get when you start zooming in. And actually both phones can do that, both the 7, the standard 7 and the 7 Pro. And as you keep zooming in, it starts to use the image that you're taking from the lens that you're looking through along with the telephoto and it fuses them together to give you the best quality image. Oh and on the Pixel 7 Pro there is a macro focus mode which means you can get as close as three centimeters away from your subject. You can pre-order both of these phones now today and the Pixel 7 starts at 599 whereas the Pixel 7 Pro starts at 899. I think they're pretty good prices and I can't wait to put them through their paces. Right, onto the Pixel Watch, and this, I'm watching this with interest, because if you know me, you'll know that I absolutely love my Apple Watch Ultra. The Pixel Watch is a very different watch to this, uh, without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, firstly, the pricing. This is £849 in the UK. The pricing of the Pixel Watch is £349 for the Bluetooth Wi-Fi version, and $399, sorry, dollars, and $399 for the cellular. And it looks very different to the Ultra, obviously. It's much more like the Apple Watch Series 7, Series 8, Series 6. It's more of a dress watch, but it is very much tuned for workouts and for healthy living. Now, they didn't go into great technical detail about the Pixel Watch. They basically told us that it's got 3D cover glass, which is very tough, apparently, and scratch resistant. It's got customizable watch bands and faces. It obviously integrates with things like Google Wallet, turn-by-turn -turn directions. It's got Google Assistant built in, obviously. All-day battery life, up to 24 hours. That'll be interesting. But it's also the first Wear OS device that is partnering with Fitbit. And they tell us about this link-up between Wear OS and Fitbit is all about delivering a personal smartwatch experience. And the first thing they went into with this is heart rate monitoring. And the Pixel Watch can track your heart rate by the second constantly all day. They said it tracks it like the time. And this obviously helps you measure how your heart is reacting to workout, but also rest and things like sleep. Clearly, the angle for this watch is fitness and health. Fall detection is coming in 2023, and every Pixel watch comes with a six months subscription to Fitbit Premium. Completely free of charge, and it's a little bit like Apple Fitness Plus, where you get workouts and things that you can work from. Again, I can't wait to put it through its paces, literally. You can pre-order it today, and apart from that Fitbit Premium thing, the six months free, you also get three months of YouTube Premium. Lastly, and fairly briefly, we were shown the Pixel tablet. It's also powered by the Tensor G2 chip that you find in the Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro. And in Google's own words, it offers the best and purest expression of Android on a tablet. And a bit like the Pixel Watch, they didn't really dig into the specs of this thing. It just looks like a fairly standard 
Android tablet, but they have done something which I think is pretty smart. And this comes from some research they've done before they started developing this tablet. They went out and asked people what they thought of tablets. And apparently the overwhelming response is that they are home bodies. It just gets in the way, you don't know what to do with it, where to put it, and it experiences fairly light use throughout the day. So what they've done, they've taken the tablet idea, created a tablet, which looks like a tablet, but they've paired it with a dock. And that dock is a speaker dock, so when you take your Google Pixel tablet and place it on the dock magnetically, basically turns it into a Google Nest Hub. I really like the look of this thing. I've never used a Google Nest Hub. I've thought about putting one in this studio, but I just, for whatever reason, haven't done that yet. But I will be doing that with this. The only problem is I can't do it until next year because the Google Pixel tablet isn't coming out until 2023. So that was the event guys, I've got lots of testing now to do, my reviews of the Pixel 7, the Pixel 7 Pro and the Pixel Watch will be hitting the channel next week, so once again if you haven't subscribed just hit the subscribe button, hit the bell and if you've enjoyed this video just give it a cheeky thumbs up. And if you've still got some time and you want to hear my latest thoughts about the Apple Watch Ultra, keep watching for a link to that video.